So I've just arrived in Los Angeles on a consulting job and I had just finished mixing a different project in New York. So I'm pretty sure on this trip, I'm gonna get some phone calls asking me to do a couple quick recalls. Uh, I brought my trusty Kef headphones, but I don't wanna use the headphone output on this laptop to judge my mixes. And I don't wanna bring a bulky interface. So I'm giving this thing a try, which I bought, paid for with my own money. It's the FIIO, I don't know how you say that, E10K USB-C. It's a digital to analog converter headphone amplifier. Uh, it goes up to 384 kilohertz sampling rate at 32 bits. It seems pretty cool. Works on Mac or PC. I think on Mac you don't need a driver. But the cool part is it's got an ASIO driver, which means that Pro Tools can address this box directly without going through any sort of shenanigans. So I'm going to put this thing through the pace to see what I think of it. Man, this thing is tiny. They also make a slightly larger one that's for you guys that have balanced headphones. It's the model K3. Uh, I'll put a link to that one down below as well. First thing I'm gonna to need to do is install the driver. Of course, on Mac, you don't need to do this. The directions say to unplug it and replug it. On the front panel, you have a bass boost switch, your headphone jack, and a volume control. And on the rear, you have a DAC direct output, a low high gain switch, and a coaxial SPDIF output. Checking the control panel settings, I can see that the bit depth is 32 bit. I think it's the same for 24 and 32. The buffer is 512 samples and the sample rate is 44.1. Okay, now I'm gonna open a Pro Tool session that's at a higher sample rate. Uh, this is the only ASIO device I have on the machine right now because I just uninstalled ASIO for all. So let's see if it shows up. Gonna take a look. Yep, there it is. Cool. And I'll go down and check the settings in the driver, see what they say. And there we go, 96 kilohertz, 512 buffer. Cool. I thought the headphone amp sounded really good, so I took it back to New York for some tests. First, I checked it on my Mac running Catalina, and it worked flawlessly. This may be a moot point on the new M1 Mac Pros, as from what I understand, they have a better headphone output. All right, so I've got this portable microscope here. I'm going to take this apart, see what they got going on inside. If you're thinking of picking one of these up, be sure that you get the model E10K TC. The TC is really important. It means type C and only the type C uses the newer chipset. And the model K3 is for balanced headphones. I'll put some links below. It's pretty nice, nicely built. Let's see. So the first chip is a PCM5102A, which is a Burr Brown digital to analog converter. I'll show you the spec sheet. It's got some good specs. Then on the output stages, I see two other chips. I'm not sure exactly what is what because I don't have a schematic, but the, the LMH664 is a high current rail-to-rail -rail amplifier. So I'm guessing that's the output stage, which may be driven by the 01642A, which is really an OPA1642, which is a good quality audio op amp. While I'm in here, I wanna take a few voltage measurements. Looking at these op amps, on the minus pin, there's minus five volts. And on the plus, there's plus five volts. Now that's good, and it shows that there's gotta be some sort of DC to DC conversion inside this box, because normally 
there's just five volts on a USB connection. That's why a lot of other headphone amps don't have very much output is because they're running at 3.3 volts or five volts and they're running just directly off the USB. Got my oscillator set at zero dB FS at 1000 cycles. That's about right almost at the onset of clipping and that is at 7.5 volts peak to peak and 2.56 volts RMS. Now that voltage is double my laptop and two of the interfaces that I've tested. So it's performing very well and I'm testing it with a load, a dummy load of 32 ohms because I want to load the amp down as much as possible. Here's 100 cycles. Once again, 7.5 to 2.48 RMS. And here is 20 cycles. It's very flat. Here's 20,000 cycles. Seven point three six, two point five six volts RMS. And just for the heck of it, here is forty thousand cycles analog. Remember, I'm running this at one hundred ninety two kilohertz sample rate. That's forty thousand cycles, two point three two volts, seven point oh four. It's really pretty flat, not distorted. And it's got a pretty high output. Here are some frequency response charts. The purple is with the low boost engaged. The orange is high gain and the green is low gain. Very flat, as you can see, out to 40K. Again, the noise and distortion is very low. You can't take these charts quite literally because when I'm testing, I have to run the headphone amp back through my audio interface. So that distortion and frequency response irregularities is included in these charts. That said, the readings are still very flat and the noise and distortion is exceptionally low. So what's the verdict? I like it. It's got more power than my laptop. It's got more power than a couple of my interfaces. Um, it's low noise, low distortion, flat frequency response out to 40 kilohertz if you're running at high sample rates. I think it's a good deal. Check it out. If you're interested in buying one, there is a link below. And uh, while you're down there, click subscribe. See you next time.